الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله a beautiful question was asked from one of our brothers may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him and bless him and rectify our affairs in his affairs Amin ya Rabbil Alameen and he asked about how to find time for worship so this is two questions he said Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh what should one do if one finds himself busy with worldly affairs like a person wants to devote some time for ibadah but he finds himself busy with work and school what are some things that he can do to keep a connection with his Lord in spite of a busy schedule? And then the second question, how does one show gratitude to Allah? Allah has favored me and has miraculously removed me from unfavorable circumstances. In addition to obeying him, how do I show my gratitude on a daily basis? Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd As I mentioned this is a fantastic these are fantastic questions which make me happy because it shows that this person cares about the connection with their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's what our practicing our Islam is about it's not about indulging in fitna it's not about indulging in controversy it's not about bigging oneself up or destroying others. But in fact, it's about coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever action you do in ibadah, it's about, it should be about coming closer to Allah azza wa jal. So reflect when you speak about people. Reflect when you begin to pray. Reflect when you supplicate. Reflect if you have the opportunity to make umrah and hajj of why you're doing it. Is it ikhlas lillah? You try seeking to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have sincerity to Allah when you refute Ahl bidah Is it for the sake of Allah or is it for the sake of your his or your group or your own desires? So first, the first question, what should one do if one finds himself busy with worldly affairs? So when a person wants to, is busy with worldly affairs, as all of us are, and some people have school and they have their uh, work and families and all of the different trials and tribulations or things that we have to uh, activities that we have that are daily activities so what should one do one should continue on worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing the wajib as as uh, you made mention of to keep a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but there are so many easy ways to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by making dhikr supplication kathratus dua that Allah makes it easier for you to worship him kathrata dhikr because this is one of the most blessed activities that a person can do uh, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because dhikr is easy it doesn't require you opening the Quran but you can uh, and it doesn't require that you're sitting in a certain environment or that you are have wudu but rather you can make dhikr on the way to the meeting. You can make dhikr in the free time in your class. You can make dhikr in between classes. You can make dhikr on the way to the library and in the library. You can make dhikr uh, throughout your day. And it's very easy to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, and kathra to dua. How does one show gratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is through obedience to Allah, and Allah will increase you in good and make it easy for you to worship Him. Because think about the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them fiqh fi deen. He gives them understanding of the religion. So Allah facilitates that. That fiqh fi deen comes from Allah It's not from our own intuitive ability. It's not from this and it's not from that. How many people have studied? How many people have studied years? I know people personally who studied with ulama, major ulama, and they didn't get fiqh fi deen. 
and it didn't hardly even affect their practice. In fact, we know some that have left Islam after being talib al-ilm, after tasting and then knowing some of the major, some major ulama of this time. So it shows us the tawfiq, the fiqh, is from Allah Azza wa Jal. Likewise, there are some people who studied very little, but Allah gave them some fiqh. He gave them some understanding. So seeking knowledge as much as you can is an attitude, is a an action to help uh, show your gratitude. But let's go to the Quran and see what Allah Azza wa Jal says. قال الله تعالى في كتاب الكريم فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says في كتاب الكريم فاذكروني Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to remember him, make dhikr. فَذْكُرُونِي Make dhikr of him. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 addressing his servants. فَذْكُرُونِي Remember me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, 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 is commanding you. And a command, we know al-amr yufid al-wujub, that when there's a command, it shows that something is an obligation. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually commanding you to make dhikr. So if you want to know how to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to maintain that sila, that sila with Allah azza wa jalla, that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is through dhikr. And then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Adhkurukum. I will remember you. You remember Allah, Allah will remember you. And you'll be remembered amongst the creation. You'll have high status with the creation because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll have iqbal. You have acceptance with the creation because no one, in fact, if you can, if we become only uh, of uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, those people who Allah loves and befriends that that are, that are Allah supports. It doesn't matter what the people say and how the people uh, busy you and the people attack you and the people try to belittle you, because you have the handhold with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and you're protected from Allah Azza wa Jal. That's why you should be cautious about speaking to people. And let's get back on task. And then in the same verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands, وَشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ And be grateful. Allah's commanding us. Be grateful to me. Be grateful to me. And do not show, basically do not d deny the favors of Allah. Kufr al ni'm kufr al ni'mah that to reject the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the favor that he's bestowed you with with your job and with your school and with your health and with your wealth and the khayr that you do remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't deny those favors and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to remember the ni'am فَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to remember the favors that He bestows on us. He commands us to remember the favors that He bestows upon us. And He commands us what? فَحَدِّثِ To speak about them. Speak about those favors. Don't brag, oh, I have a new car, I have new this, I got a new wife, I have this, I don't know, whatever the case may be. But instead, let it be a lesson for others. Say, subhanAllah, I was doing such and such, and Allah favored me with this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has increased my rizq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made my family life better. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with a new child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with new income or various means of income. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our rizq and bless us with ikhlas, with thabat, and bless us with firmness on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأُزِيدَكُمْ لِأُزِيدَنَّكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ibrahim, in Surah Ibrahim, He says, Subhana, that if you are grateful, then I shall increase you. So if you want the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to be your fa the favors Allah has favored you with to be increased, then thank Him. Be thankful and be grateful. And we're going to talk about this. I, I didn't mean for this to be so long, so forgive me, but I have a lot to say because there's just so many fawaid uh, from our imams and from contemplating the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is taken from Riyadh al-Salihin, great imam Noahi. We find many of our answers if we go back to Bukhari and Muslim and we look at beautiful books like... Uh, uh, but Riyadh Salihin, and this is in the chapter Kitab Hamdulillah Taala wa Shukrihi. This is in the book of praising Allah, the Almighty, and being grateful to Him. Subhanallah, beautiful. So this ayah here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is letting us know that if you are grateful to Allah, He will increase you. He's going to increase you in the favors. This is a reminder for myself, first and foremost, and my brothers and sisters. This is why it's going to take a bit of time, so please be patient with me, because I'm learning and I'm being reminded of the good that Allah has favored us with and that we should be thankful and we better get busy and come back to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for Kitab al-Kareem, wa qala ta'ala, and, and say, all praise belongs to Allah. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى And Allah the Almighty says, وَأَخِرُوا دَعْوَاهُمْ إِنَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And their last supplication, their last supplication was in Alhamdulillah, all the praise belongs to Allah, Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. Ahabatifillah, Alhamd wa Shukr. Very briefly, Alhamd, it refers to praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Allah is perfect actualizing and uh, realizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from imperfection. This is hamd. And even in the Arabic language you don't say hamid to fulan. You don't say I praised so and so by using the word hamd. But instead in the Arabic they use athna or uh, that I from uh, Thana, I believe it's Thana or it's Athna, that Athna Ali, Athna to Ali, uh, or Athna to Allah, Fulan. I gave, I, I praise so and so, but the praise here is different because when we use Athna for the creation to praise something or, uh, or someone for their good work, I praise my students for their good work in their studies. But praising Allah, alhamd, is reserved for Allah because this is complete praise. This has, it has to go with ubudiyah. This has to do with uh, uh, worship. You know, because it has to do with complete, the perfection. No one is worthy of this. Alhamdulillah, the praise is to Allah. All praise belongs to Allah because He's perfect. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's hamd. A shukr, and the shukr is what we want to show because you're asking how can we be grateful to Allah جل? So we need to know what shukr is. A shukr, habitifillah, A shukr, it is making it apparent, making the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or being grateful to the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He's bestowed upon you in your heart, on your tongue, 
and in your actions. Why? Because all of those things comprise of Iman. As we mentioned many times in this hadith of Sa'id, uh, Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, uh, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul Min ra'a minkum munkharan fi ghayru bi yad Whoever sees a munkar, then change it with his hand. If he's unable to, then change it with his tongue, speak out against it. If he's unable to, then change it with his heart, and that's the weakest of Iman. Letting us know all of those things are a part of Iman. What is a part of Iman? That Iman is comprised of, of course, the belief in the heart, the statements on the tongue, and the actions of your limb, and the actions of your limbs. So, the shukr, the way you can show shukr is by extra actions of worship to Allah Azza wa Jalla. So this is the difference. You can say Alhamdulillah and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by just making dhikr, which is uh, uh, azim. This is a, a major act of ibadah, making dhikr to Allah, and it's so easy. But if you want to continue and other ways to make shukr, it is through actions. And it's in the heart, it's that dhikr on the tongue, or giving salams to your brothers and sisters in Islam, saying something good, kind about people, smiling. All of these are ways that you make ibadah and show shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially if you're conscious of this. If you're conscious and you're doing this because you literally want to thank Allah more, then this is a great act of ibadah and it will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will increase you. Extra prayer. Try to get those sunnahs in. Even though you're busy, try to get those sunnahs in as much as possible. Fit them in the day one way or another. When you come home and you're tired, get that wudu in and pray rakatain and then one for wither and call it a night. Whatever you can to increase your ibadah beyond the wajib. As much as you can. And this is how you show shukr. Also doing talab al-ilm. As much as you can. Read one hadith a day. Read, try to memorize a portion of a hadith. Try to Read an ayat of the Qur'an every day, whatever you can fit in. You know your schedule better than, than me. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm al-nafi and rizqan tayyiba. And I hope this answered the question. May Allah bless us with tawfiq. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.